Hi, I'm Lori Brown. Let's ponder cast. This is the first in a series about night. Why night? Because too often our nights get ignored. Weird, because there are just as many of them as there are days, but it seems that only our days get the attention and the intention. Things that we want to get accomplished, yeah, we design our days, but Often our nights are left to fend for themselves and, well, they can get away from us. You know those nights. You're watching a little bit of TV, you're spending time on the computer, and then suddenly the night is gone. It's time to sleep, and you look up at the clock and wonder where the time went. You get ready for bed feeling mildly out of sorts, like you've lost your keys like you're missing something. It makes sense. You were pulled out of the real world all evening. You turn out the light without ever really tuning into your night. Will you sleep through tonight, please? sleep? Am I hungry? Do I have to pee? Why am I awake? Wait, is that the mouse back? And it begins. three hours to the alarm. I'm thinking about everyone else's troubles. I'm thinking I'm gonna die, and who's gonna take care of all this stuff? Regrets? Yeah, every single one. Let's list them. I miss my dog. I miss my childhood pet. Here come the things that I wish I hadn't said. Here come the words that I wish I had. It's time for making judgments about everything and everyone. Major amounts of time devoted to other people's troubles. I can't go to work tomorrow. How am I going to get out of this? I'm angry that I can't sleep. I am thinking about the weight of time. Here I am in the fear. I'm just wasting time lying here. I should get up, do something, be productive. I don't feel alone at this time of night. I feel lonely and afraid. I'm not sure I can make it through this night. I've already been up pacing through the house. Fridge light on, get a glass of water, pace. Just separated, no job, but just bought a house. Money. I run the numbers again and again in my head. What am I missing? Will I lose the house? What have I done to my marriage, my children, my life? My heart is racing and I am sweating. I weep as I imagine all the ways that I've screwed up my children, who I am missing so dreadfully. I wander through my empty house, thinking of them sleeping at their father's. Still, 
I return to bed hoping sleep can obliterate all this grief and anxiety. 3.17 a.m. Fuck this, my head is going to explode. I get up and I pull on my running gear. I step outside my front door. I tuck the front door key and a piece of ID into my bra, so when the police finally find my body, they'll know it's me. Nice. I start to run. Every alarm bell is going off in my head. Not safe, not smart. If I told anyone what I was doing, they would read me the riot act. Once again, I say, fuck it. If my heart is racing and I am sweating and terrified, I want it to be real, not some fiction my brain is creating for me as I lie in bed. It's after the bars close and before the morning paper delivery. Welcome to the hour of the wolf. I'm going to outrun him. I start to run down the middle of the empty road. Can't do that on my daily run. The sound of my breathing is so loud. My footfall is about half the pace of my heartbeat. Stepping straight from the warmth of my bed to outside, I immediately start to shiver. The air is damp and cold. It feels thick and it smells clean. Ah, the cars are sleeping. It smells like the air of my childhood, sleeping in a tent in my own backyard, only 15 terrifying steps from the house. The 10-year-old in my head wants me to turn around. I run faster because suddenly I am very afraid, my head constantly swiveling to check behind me, looking for any sign of danger, looking between houses, squinting down the dark road to see if anyone is there. A hundred times I see a shadow of a man at the side of a house in between the bushes. Getting closer, the shadow turns into a bush. Maybe. Or is it a garbage can? The danger, I imagine, always comes in the form of a person lurking in the dark. I can't trust myself to know which way to turn when I hit the corner. This doesn't even look like my neighborhood at all. Everything swallowed up by the monochrome of the night means I've lost my visual map. No bright green porch, no blast of color from the garden on the corner, all shadows and shapes now. I can't name what I'm seeing. Every awful thought I had pacing inside my house is completely gone. My brain is firing on all cylinders in both flight and fight mode, and there is no room for anything else. This is what I want. This night is still terrifying, but now the terror is real. (laughs) I feel lighter. A car is coming towards me slowly. The driver has a flashlight and is shining it on the houses on one side of the street as he creeps along. I run to the other side and up a driveway and hide at the side of the house. Hiding, I'm hiding. I really am afraid. The car stops two houses down from me. I hear the sound of wheels on a suitcase rolling down a driveway. Ah, an airport limo picking someone up for an early flight. In two minutes they are gone, and I head back to the middle of the street, feeling even lighter. I pick up the sound of a far-off train. I never hear that at the house. Then on my left... I hear the sound of barfing in a bush. From the silhouette, I'd say it's a teenager, and I'm guessing it's his house. Not wanting to wake his parents, he thinks he'll sneak outside and barf in the bush right beside the front door. Ah, no, his parents won't figure that out at all. Such a bright, drunk boy. I run by him ten feet away. He doesn't see me. Most houses are completely dark, all asleep, but every once in a while there is the familiar blue flicker of a TV. There's someone else who can't sleep, someone else who has lost the plot between day and night. As I pound by their houses, I think, ah, a kindred spirit. It's not a long run by daytime standards. 
but 25 minutes in the middle of the night can seem like forever. I arrive back home, stretching my legs on my porch steps, heart pounding, sweating, very much awake. No, that's not the right word. I feel very much alive. More alive than I felt in a long time. This is not the night I know from inside my warm, safe house. This new world of darkness might be unknowable because this dark has nothing of me in it. My nights have always been on the other side of a window and filled with my thoughts, my own distractions. I have shaped my experience of night in my head for better, but increasingly for worse. Mysterious and dangerous my run tonight was way beyond my experience and my comfort zone. This dark was not holy. Or was it just me? Unlocking my door, I feel like I've, I've gotten away with something. That I have slipped into a world I'm not supposed to see or experience. I shower quickly and I drink a glass of water. I am exhausted. I fall into bed and I sleep for three more hours. night run started something for me. I have no guide, no path, and no light, but I want to know more about this dark, holy or unholy. I can't solve the mystery of the night, but I can understand what it does to me. I want to know its taste, smell, sound, and just what I can actually see in the dark. Perhaps most importantly, I want to understand how it feels because the seismic shift that overwhelms me when I'm out in it alone, with my heart pounding in my chest, must be worth knowing. And that part is knowable. There's a whole other way to experience the night, not just by staying up late and continuing leftover daytime pursuits with the lights on, and not just lying in bed wishing you were unconscious while anxiety beats you to a pulp. There needs to be a third way, because there is another part of you that needs tending to. And it needs to happen in the dark, and you need to be brave and curious to find it. The hour of the wolf that has you loathing the moment you are awake in the night again is only in your head. How to step out of that fictional, hypothetical hell you have created and become part of what's really happening at night.
let's go back to a good memory of the night <laughs> to finish off with. This is a childhood memory of mine. My sister, who's 13 months younger than me, we are on summer vacation and sleeping at my grandparents' house in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. The two big couches in the living room are made up into beds, and we are pinned to the cushions with aggressively tucked sheets and blankets. My grandmother is in her robe, and she is walking around the small house, turning off the lights. When the living room is dark, save for the street light shining in through the window by the Hammond organ, she sits down at the organ and begins to play. Never looking at the keys, she would be looking out the window, street light bathing her face, as she quietly and beautifully played old hymns. You know what? She looked exactly like Mother Superior from The Sound of Music when she cranked out Climb Every Mountain, so you know why the memory has stuck. After about ten minutes of her playing, Susan and I listening quietly from our couches, she would sigh click off the organ, say goodnight, and pad off to bed. And Susan and I would be left alone in the living room, feeling like we had just witnessed something quite private and almost sacred. Music was prayer for my grandmother. Only, you know, I'm not sure exactly what God she was praying to. It felt like something other than Sunday school God. This God was bigger and way more mysterious and powerful, and she could get closer to her God in the dark. Watching her play the organ at night was wildly exciting for me. I was awake for hours after that, listening to my grandparents snore mostly, but still feeling the glow of hearing her play in the darkness. Take something that normally happens in the daytime, light, and move it to the night, and awareness and attention become squared. When you wake in the middle of the night, don't turn on the lights. If you have to, wash dishes in the dark, fold laundry by feel, but don't turn the light on. The night is not against you, nor is it for you? The night is blessedly neutral. Seek out that night, whether it's sitting by an open window or wrapped in a blanket on your balcony or in your backyard. Get curious about the dark and feel yourself become part of it. Have a great night and have a great day. I'm Laurie Brown. This is PonderCast. Cast.